So as, as Jason said, and I think it's already pretty obvious, this is our first hangout. So it's a little bit of an experiment here. Um, uh, to be honest, I was uh, really impressed and really uh, like happy to see what uh, you guys came up with uh, the trending vending machine. This is the main reason I think why Jason uh, contact with you, and I was super excited when I hear that uh, you replied to him. So first of all, I want to say really congratulations for what you did. I think it's a pretty awesome job. And. Uh, so I think Jason sent you a kind of an outline for the questions that we had uh, about the project and everything, but I think it's more, uh, uh, I don't know how to say this, like, uh, try to know a little bit more about you, how do you came up with the idea, and the most important thing, like how you uh, bring it to life, no? I think it's uh, the most incredible thing, especially. Let me say something real quick, guys. So uh, Lewis is right now in Barcelona, and uh, and uh, maybe we should introduce ourselves first. Sorry. So maybe if you get you guys might have checked us out online. Uh, my name is Jason, and um, I am currently uh, working on the Bot BQ, which is a three D hamburger printer. So. Um, the one thing that we all have in common is that uh, we're working on 3D printed food, uh, which leads us to Lewis's um, site, 3digitalcooks.com. Um, and, uh, and I'm currently in uh, Rüsselsheim, Germany, right outside of uh, Frankfurt. So that that's uh, um, um, kind of the locale there. And uh, I used to be, I'll give you a brief history on me. So I work right now, I do some system engineering for a local communications firm over here. I used to be a soldier over here, um, and then we moved back to Portland, where I'm from. And um, and then we just decided, you know, let's go try Europe and got a couple suitcases. And it's six years later, a three-and-a-half-year-old daughter and a small Shih Tzu dog as well. So, um, you know, that's how my life's gone in the past few years. And I'll let uh, Lewis introduce himself as well. Go for it, Lewis. Uh, I don't want to uh, move forward. My name is Lewis. I'm from Barcelona. I have this uh, weird uh, uh, hobby that is printing food. And actually got me a job in Spain, what is quite strange nowadays. Uh, I work uh, for Natural Machines. It's one of the few companies in the world that actually are trying to do a commercial uh, 3D food printer. But apart from that, as I say, the, uh, printing food is my hobby, is what I do all the time, even if my wife doesn't really like. So uh, I, I was really impressed and happy to see what uh, you came up with, and I, I'm really looking forward to hear about you and about your studio. I have been seeing your machines and all the things that you have been done, and I think it's really cool. Thanks. Thanks. <laughs> so, uh, so for our introductions, my name is Adam, uh, Jason and I, we've talked back and forth. Um, uh, so my background, I used to be a graphic designer, art director, used to practice architecture, uh, and started this, uh, came on board with Laser Lab a couple of years ago, so it's somewhat uh, new, still at the startup stage, uh, so I guess my hobbies are, are design and doing cool stuff with design. Um, so mashing together all the tools and techniques and skills I've learned, uh, trying to use them for uh, new and different. Okay. Uh, my name is Katie, and I am a trained uh, product designer. I went to school for industrial design. I also do. Um, a small part of my life was dedicated to special effects, which um, I transitioned out of into um, product design. And um, I've been working as an industrial designer since until I started, uh, I decided to start my own business, which was essentially in 2009 with Brandon. And then a few years later, um, we met Adam. And he came on board with a lot of other uh, to us and started doing projects like this. 
working on some projects like this, building off of what started out as back in the day. Yeah. Um, and I'm Brandon. I uh, I'm also uh, have like a product design, industrial design background, um, and uh, a longer background in arts and just sculpture and building all kinds of things. And so, Laser Lab is, uh, has become a great way for me to just, uh, I guess, make my hobbies my profession. That's the laser lab. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that sounds uh, pretty good. Uh, one book come up, like, kind of, uh, it, you know, our process is far, and uh, uh, everyone's, every project seems to be a project. We have new challenges. Uh, you know, whatever comes through the door, uh, it always seems to be completely different, and that's what's fun about it. Uh, so, you know, if there was like, you know, a tagline of, of ours, perhaps, <laughs> I'm discussing with Brandon Katie, but um, someone, someone said, uh, we, we, ne we try to do, we never try to do the same thing once. And that sort of is, the, the you know, really sums up our, our uh, project thus far is everything is brand new and we're always learning new stuff. So, uh, that's kind of in a nutshell, I think. That that's pretty pretty awesome. So everybody's there. Well, every the three of you have a, a pretty pretty heavy um, design and uh, creation. I'm guessing um, uh, background, but uh, is so so I'm guessing you're learning the. Uh, hardware slash software aspects, you know, as well, probably not as you go now, but that's that's kind of the uh, the fun of the, the the stuff that you're doing now as well, then the hardware pieces and the, the puzzle. Yeah, pretty awesome. Yeah, yeah. How many people uh, work at Laser Lab? Like, I'm sorry, Lewis, did you repeat that? How many people work at Laser Lab nowadays? Like, uh, um, there right now it's just the three of us. But when a project like the one that came on, you know, we we hired we hired out vendors, and we hired out subcontractors. So, you know, because of our size uh, and just cost restraints, you know, uh, we keep a low profile. And so, a project comes in, we need this guy and that guy. Uh, so our overhead is, is still really small, so just three of us officially. Um, yeah, we're, we're lucky enough to have a close network of uh, friends and vendors that we can, you know, pull from whenever we need certain skill sets for certain projects. Yeah, and we're lucky Pittsburgh, uh, Pittsburgh has a kind of a, is developing a bit of a critical mass uh, and a pretty big talent pool. Software, uh, those kind of capabilities. Uh, as you guys may not know, that Google here in Pittsburgh, uh, there's there's as well. It's a kind of breed. At least I don't know. It seems like there's kind of something going on where there's a lot of those people around. Uh, yeah, it's not hard, especially in our friends circle that we have, to find somebody to fill in gaps where we need. So until we can afford to hire people, we will just keep on doing this. <laughs> I think I think that's awesome. Uh, uh, you got you guys got a tight knit group, and it, I, I'm guessing the smaller size would be uh, pretty easy to bounce ideas off of each other and just you know go go with the flow, not having to you know worry about including a ton and ton of people inside of a project. You can reach out and uh, ping that biz right off each other. Um, you know, just go for it from there. That's pretty How cool. Does it work like, uh, uh, for example, in, in the in Oreo calls you and say, "I want to do something really awesome," or they came up with an idea, or 
or, or you work with them together in order to put together uh, this kind of magic uh, thing? I don't know. Well, um, I guess uh, the project has sort of been um, swirling around for um, almost two years. And um, Oreo knew that they wanted to do something um, cutting edge that would get people attention and, uh, you know, 3D food printing is you know, cutting edges right now. So the uh, idea was out there, but it was, it was very much just an idea, and so we had to make it a reality in a pretty short period of time. We all work together. Uh, the the main players in this, we all work together um, to kind of figure out what what's what could actually happen within the small time frame that we were given. And um, there was back and forth and give and take, but we arrived at this solution. And so this is kind of a combination of all of our thoughts throughout yeah. all like all the teams that had a hand in this, it's kind of like we all combined energy to make this yeah. idea. So, uh, and to elaborate on that, um, so when, when, the way it started, the way we became officially involved is we made a, they came to us with like a prototype that had like, you know, toilet paper rolls and, you know, it was really just a real sketch model, you know, really simple. Uh, and we developed a, a high resolution prototype that had, you know, minor like uh, mechanical function functionality, like you could turn a knob, you could turn this, um, and it was just really for to get to that next step. Once we had that prototype, then we collaborated with, with Oreo. It was just sort of like goal. And you know, they, you know, they had to say, okay, that's not possible. And then we would, it's kind of this back and forth feedback loop. That's just a part of these kind of projects. But it moved really quickly. Uh, the whole thing was like six weeks, um, or maybe a little bit more uh, with the prototype. Um, but it all happened very quickly. Uh, and so I think uh, it was a testament to the players who were involved uh, that. There was trust all the way around. Part and everyone, other people do their parts, um, and so all in all, it worked out really well. Down south by the class, you know, uh, even though the weather wasn't quite as warm as like, but um, it was enough to make Oreo fans wait in the rain for two hours <laughs> to get. <laughs> So maybe that's success, right? Um, um, I, I have to say that um, I'm not. I, I don't. I don't think over the the history I've been uh, checking you guys out. You guys haven't been around that long, correct? Yeah. So I mean, I, I just I, I want to say congratulations. I, I feel that's a, a pretty major achievement. You know, being at South by Southwest. You know, at such a, a young age, it's such an awesome, but to me, an, a, a really awesome project. And then also have a, a big, um, a, a big player in uh, you know not only food but in culture. You know, come to you for that type of help, and then uh, you know that's some pretty swift success. You know, and I, I just think that's awesome. So congratulations on that so far. Um, Thanks. You know, when I when I saw the video, I saw it from Matt Richardson, and I, I follow a lot of the stuff he does. Uh, you know, from the books and the pies and everything, and uh, he did the the short interview there, and uh, I was just blown away. I mean, that was, uh, it was it was pretty awesome. And, you know, being a three D printed food advocate and uh, promoter myself, you know, it, it just took it to the next level. And so, yeah, just congratulations on uh, you know making it to South by Southwest. I, you know, it can't can't help uh, a little bit of promotion there too on that. That was it was really really awesome. Thanks. It was really big. Well, uh, you know, the yeah, there, and um, 
we had a great partner that trusts us. Uh, and that's, that's what it takes. I mean, to do this type of stuff, um, it takes having a client that knows, you know, what it takes to do this stuff. What it takes to support it. So, I think it's a combination of a lot of things. Uh, it's, you know, without them, you know, uh, some of our clients, we wouldn't have that opportunity, you know. Uh, so, uh, it's, it was a, hopefully, you know, we're, we're hoping to do more work, uh, but we probably can guarantee that it's going to be different. Uh, and that's just kind of the nature of it. But uh, we'll see where it goes from here. Um, One of the things I uh, like the most from the project is sometimes with this kind of uh, new 3D print applications, normally, especially it's like for one one uh, one um, one thing, no, like there is not one time like for one show. Uh, people tend to focus just on the hardware. The thing that I like the most from your from your from your vending vending machine was that everything uh, looked perfect, like. On the UI, how the how the user had the experience. It was not just three D printing. It was uh, actually it was it was not three D printing for me. It was like users actually getting uh, the, their own customized cookie. You know. So uh, during the whole project, what was the most difficult part for you? Like uh, how to work with the users, making the machine work, or uh, I don't know. I'm curious about that. I think that's a good observation. I think we are on the same page in terms of you see a lot of disparate inventions, um, but you don't see it all come together as something that someone can use. Uh, and you know, our partner, our client Maya, you know, is also really good at understanding the consumer end of things and and you know, providing that. They had apps, like had, uh, they had their apps for me and dress up the face and everything. So everything was up, you know, everything down to t-shirts and chocolate milk. And so everyone involved in the project, stuff that we weren't intimately involved in, but everyone knew that, you know, you had to complete a, a complete experience. And so it wasn't just a lonely 3D printer sitting on the island. It was an immersive sort of experience, like I don't want to say like Disneyland, but you know it was like so they had all the everything, and so you 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 kind of like you wanted to be there, and it was more than just a 3D printer um, moving around. Uh, so I think that's a real, uh, I guess, innovation, or just like it took it to the next level where people could see like the next. If you're gonna really do this. How do you do it? How do you engage consumers? And so, like, there's all this stuff, you know, like Raspberry Pi and all this stuff that is fun. It's also that consumer clients understood how to connect the consumers, and that's the real missing piece that maybe you don't see a lot of. Yeah, that's that's true. Oh, shit. Now that's uh, that's true in that point. Um, that you're saying connecting the um, the consumers and actually uh, engaging them in the product. You know, I saw that right away. You have the machine behind you. I didn't. I didn't realize. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's right there. <laughs> we tried to. Uh, that's pretty. Is that one of the prototypes, or is that the actual uh, piece that was in the connex there at the display? That's the actual one. We have them both here. Yeah. The. Um, Front bezel and uh, transparent monitor are uh, off of it right now. Right. Um, we just kind of. Uh, yeah, we plan on taking you around it, kind of to get you more inside, like a closer look. And if you have questions, you know, we can try to answer whatever questions you have. Uh, uh, if we can, so you know, whatever you want to talk about, we'll more about. Try to. Uh, uh, we can try to answer questions if we can. Yeah. Unfortunately, it's it's not um it's not set up to run right now. So. No, I'm used to that. <laughs> I'm used to that. 
I've got about seven projects up here that all ran at one time or another, and uh, they're not set up right now either to run. So, yeah, I think a tour of the machine would be awesome. Okay, I, uh, I'll be the cameraman. Um, so, yeah, this is without the skin and without the uh, front bezel. Um, and you've, of course, seen videos and whatever. Um, yeah. So, you know, shoot off any questions you have or what you, you know. So one question I have is how come the inverted delta? I made a guess it was because, uh, you know, visibility of the, the actual uh, uh, cookie, uh, um, the extrusion of the cream onto the cookie. Um, yeah, but... Brandon can explain it to you. I'm sorry, what was, what was the question? He wants to know why we chose the Delta Bot. The inverted the Delta. Oh. Well, um, the Delta Bot design worked well for us for a couple of reasons. Uh, first one being that since we were actually extruding cream onto um, you know, a circular object, the, the motion of the Delta Bot um, was pretty ideal. Um, and with Delta Bots, you can actually get uh, True circles a lot, a lot easier than with that, you know typical um, uh, Cartesian. And then also the uh, the extra Z movement um, worked out really well because in early um, in the early stages, this actually had a stylus on the bottom that would be able to write custom messages in the bottom of the cups. Um, which we ended up not using in the end, but it, it does have that ability. That's pretty cool. So, so you sort of used both, both ends. And it was yeah. also uh, kind of a nice way to get some drama with like the, um, the movement of the Delta bot dropping down and then tipping to dump the cookie into the cup. Uh, it was a way to make the uh, finale a little exciting. Yeah, that. Go ahead, Jason. No, I think that that totally is because, uh, you know, you're not just getting the, uh, the 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 Y and X movement, you know, with the normal, normal I guess, Cartesian machine. With that, you're actually getting some action there, you know, a little bit more visual experience there. That's a, I think I th I think that was a great idea to actually use that. Yeah, I think it also they played off that with the interface, um, you know, where you could they had a circle that moved with a transparent monitor, um, which uh, that's another uh, topic of because we've dealt with transparent monitors in the past, and this is probably the project that has the best content with those transparent monitors. Um, you see them a lot in the marketplace now. Uh, Samsung makes them, uh, but people aren't doing a lot of cool stuff with them. Uh, and so I think this is probably one of the coolest things I've seen. And when we've used transparent monitors in the past, and the way a lot of people use it is like typically there's something static in the monitor and a lot of moving graphics. And this project, you know, it was kind of exciting to see a robot actually behind the monitor that also had moving graphics. So it was really a pretty cool experience. Yeah, it was it was it was integrating, uh, you know, the interface with the robot, and so the robot responded to the interface and vice versa, and so it wasn't it was a two way conversation, um, and I think that was also, you know, one of the cool things about it. For me, it was the most impressive one. First time I saw, I thought it was fake because <laughs> that was really really. No, yeah, you're not the only one. People get confused when they see it. They don't really understand what's going on. It takes them a second to understand and then they get blown away. <laughs> yeah, and we, we went through uh, uh, some tests, but uh, overall it's a, you know, it's pretty simple off-the-shelf technology. Um, it's just a matter how you use it. Yeah, you could actually show them you know, the, the CMCNC. Yeah, so this is uh, the, the CNC uh, board, um, you know, and we, 
obviously integrated um, it with uh, our programming, uh, which is mainly open source, uh, C sharp, uh, open frameworks. Um, so, uh, and if we had our programmer here, we could explain a little bit more about some of that stuff. Um, but, you know, we can do some cursory explanations of uh, some of the stuff if you want to learn about it. And, and about the cookie dispenser. Yeah. Because I, All right. <clears throat> These had, um, if you remember, they had long acrylic tubes that also attached, and those were the fillers. And then these stayed stationary the whole time. And Brandon um, custom designed this to fit the actual size of the Oreo. So these were all built from scratch. They basically just are powered by servos, which twist them and release one cookie at a time and it drops to the platform and then this is the entire carousel. You want to show the carousel? This is the entire carousel that spins um, everything stationary to this axis which is powered by this by a pulley down here in this motor and um, the code was written so each one of the frosting and the wafer tubes has its point upon the carousel so it would always know where to turn uh, to the cookie dropper on the Delta bot. They were, they were kind of connected together. So basically this would turn, drop a wafer onto the platform. Then the frosting would go to whatever frosting was being selected. And uh, these are pneumatically uh, powered. So the air would turn on and dis and extrude the frosting through these tubes onto the cookie. And uh, these are nice because the um, this was really like a turning point when we discovered these uh, pumps. They're individual pumps, and these are retainers, and it allowed us to pre-fill cartridges, so we could easily just take the top off and pop it cartridges that were pre-filled, pre-sanitized, everything. So it allowed the whole setup to go so much easier than if we didn't have these, uh, this type of pneumatic pump to work with. And then you just pop back on. And then these are controllers where you control the PSI. And they're hooked to uh, a compressor that's off to the side. So. That's kind of the carousel, how the carousel and the wafer droppers all come together um, to drop the cookie and build up and then draw the pattern on top. Do you have a question, Jason? Yeah, I uh, I've been I, I went over that um, the um, the actual extrusion design for the BOP BQ and uh, cartridge. I guess kind of cartridge-like is where I'm at now as well, um, and yeah. uh, because, uh, but I, I haven't tried anything with uh, air pressure. I think uh, Lewis is, uh, has some type of plans for that, but uh, but yeah, that's yeah. really interesting. I think the capability to pop the top off and throw another cartridge in, or in my case, I just reload some uh Hamburger meat. It starts to uh, look pretty disgusting after it's been sitting there for a while. But uh, but that's pretty. I, I really like the cartridge idea. Some of the challenges Katie went through. We were um, we had to really respond to uh, Oreos um, health standards. Well, and not so. even their health. We had to um, we had to respond to their health standards. Um, they have a really strong. Um, Standards as far as everything has to be sanitized. The like their safety code is just through the roof. It's you know top notch, and we had to make sure that we could um, live up to those standards. But also, um, we had to work with their product. You know their product wasn't changing, and we had to like work around their product. And so it was a journey. Um, it took me a while to arrive at uh, pneumatic air pressure things. 
because uh, I wanted, I tossed around um, using a different type of pumping system um, like auger or saltic pumps and having pressurized reservoirs that just has like a tube, like one little tube coming out of a pressurized reservoir. Um, because there is stuff on the internet that discourages people to extrude things using air pressured uh, systems because they say, um, a lot of people on forums say that it's not easily controlled, which um, I think it is if you choose the right, um, the right system for your need. And that's where we really put a lot of energy in. It became obvious down the line that we needed to really quickly commit to a extrusion method. Um, and we went through all the different types of methods and this came out superior um, to our need. And so we really, really put a lot of energy into fitting whatever we chose for the extrusion method to the product itself. And um, so that's why we're having a lot of success with the pneumatic pump. It was so a very good challenge. With, uh, with the pneumatic pumps, uh, actually, uh, you you uh, can tune, fine tune the pressure within the. Yeah. Pump. Sure. It, it's not automatic, let's say. No, you you regulate it from here. That's correct. Yeah, That's correct. yeah. They're individual, so they're all individual system. Like one pump, one regulator. One pump, one regulator, and they all run off of one compressor, but these regulators were key to being able to regulate the airflow however we need it to. The inflow the and the outflow. Yeah. And we did... Um, we they did. have a suck back feature too to stop the, you know, once it compresses and releases the icing, once it stops, it sucks back so it doesn't keep oozing out, which is also a good feature is something to look out for when selecting. Yeah, it's something I noticed on your barbecue, Jason. That seemed like you were dealing with as well. Yeah, it's uh, it was a, a tough thing. The other option that I was looking at was actually a design, extruder design by uh, by Lewis, uh, Paralistic extruder. Did you guys experiment with that type of uh, extrusion at all? Where you have well, I guess you mentioned the reservoir, um, but uh, yeah, yeah, I actually. Um, Wait, I think Lewis, Lewis, did you do peanut butter extrusion? Was that you? I, I did peanut butter, yeah. That was you? Yeah, that was me, the peanut butter guy. I, you inspired me. You were my, oh my God. <laughs> I found it and I saw the open source parts. Let me show you something. These are early prototypes. Oh, that's awesome. It's not there. It's on the floor. These are. I feel oh, there like it is. <laughs> That's awesome. I printed. We printed first. So we got a lot of Delta bots for backup. Yeah. And we actually used the Delta bots to print our cars and through your open source. This was the route that I wanted to go. I thought it was best. And I was like, this person online is doing this with peanut butter and the viscosity is similar. Why can't we do it? So I tried so hard to make this work. And in the end, I couldn't get the combination of the tube. Um, it pulled and I got it to stuck. But we had to switch to this because uh, of all the other factors and I didn't have time to tweak it and it was taking a long time because I needed I needed to scale this up because the tube size needed to be a lot bigger so I needed to scale your size up and get the right pressure pot to work with it in order to make it work and I simply didn't have the time. Because the so. viscosity of the uh, oil creep is very, very high. It's the thing. Like, yeah. 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 Uh, Definitely. Yeah, it's, it's really thick. It's thicker than peanut butter, so it was it had a higher viscosity than peanut butter. So that's so funny. So thank you for that. You started you started this in my world. <laughs> so well, what else can we? Uh, what other questions do you have? 
I have I have a, a list. So uh, actually, uh, to to end up with the with the comp air compression. So you release the pressure inside, or you actually uh, suck back with uh, some vacuum pump. So these these controllers actually. Um, these are really nice units that um, control the suck back and the down pressure. So it's it's just like. Um, an on-off switch. When it's on, it's putting the downward force, and as soon as it switches off, these automatically um, uh, release the suck back, and they have just an exhaust port out the, out the back side of the controller. Okay. And the way that we were able to control both of these and get them to integrate with um, our UI and everything is um, we actually built a, uh, I don't know if Adam can show you, there's a custom board up here that we built um, with uh, relays to uh, control the on and off of each one of these 12 pumps. I have another question. Sorry, <laughs> Taze on you. Uh, one of the main issues that I have normally when I try to load the, uh, the, some thick material into a capsule like yours is like the air bubbles inside. Mm -hmm. um. <laughs> We honestly, we didn't have any um, issue with that really. It was the loading that um, I guess is pretty important. Um, and um, you, the difference between what we're doing here and what you were doing is you were actually like, well, I guess it wasn't that different, but you were actually printing it um, through, through your, uh, through the tip, you were actually 3D printing with the peanut butter and the yogurt and stuff. We were just extruding and having the platform move below. So um, as far as the air bubbles go, we were using another one of these to load that. So it would get pressurized and it would prime it and we would squirt it into the cartridges that go into here. So we were pre-priming the material by using another one of these like pumping systems. And so that's how we got a lot of the air out. But um, but that wasn't really a huge issue, the air wasn't, unless it was loaded incorrectly. And I think I think another reason it wasn't so much of an issue for us is because, again, the cream, the viscosity is so high on the that um, if there was an air pocket, it would be pushed out very quickly. Yeah, I think it's just a testament to the system that we got. It's just a really good system for application. And it, we didn't run into too many problems. So it, it's just a really well well made system. Yeah, it's it's really impressive. It's really, really impressive in the you know, you guys it's it's obvious that there's a lot a lot of engineering and uh, design that went into it. Um yeah, it's it's just awesome, and that's that's so so cool that uh, Lewis was actually <laughs> Lewis's design as open source was able to have a tiny 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 effect on uh, the growth of it. You know, well, I mean, it had a bigger effect probably than I made. Um, it was a great inspiration. It was really good inspiration. I because I, I you know they they gave it to they gave us this project and it's like. How are we going to make this work? And so I just dove into anything I could find on the internet, and I didn't know to start. And Lewis is probably like these blogs where they talk about. I think it's called the MK1, MK2. You know what I'm talking about, Lewis? The the people made. Um, they were air pressure too, but then they were saying stay away from air pressure, and then you started doing your pumping system, and so I got discouraged with air pressure and went to your pumping system, and the whole time we were referencing back when I actually built it, I ordered all the parts off of my master that I could, with the exception of some bearings that I had to get from Amazon, but I built it all in a day or two. Um, and I would have ultimately liked to have gone that way, um, 
because the carousel could have been smaller if we just needed a little tube coming out of it. The carousel could have been a lot smaller, thus making everything else smaller. But at the time, like the time wasn't there to uh, really find so, so we had to go with a pre-existing product instead of building something from scratch. Actually, I'm but, going but to... It was. So, um, well, I, I really appreciate you guys' time. I know it's it's been, uh, we've kind of extended on the amount of time that we'd like for you guys. Um, but I have a couple questions uh, as well about Laser Lab Studio. Can anybody just bring a project to you? Are you guys kind of a, a makerspace, hackerspace? Or is it is it, uh, is it basically project-based engineering type work that you guys are doing now? We're, a, we're a, you know, trying to be a design firm, um, and you know we've these projects are right now we're sort of gearing up to, and we can have tools and but we really have them, like so we can task, so we can do R and D, um, so we can create these projects. <clears throat> So all the machining, the second was pretty much done here. Um, so you know our effort is you know, to have to be seen as an idea place, design firm, but also a place that makes. Um, and you know if there's stuff that we need to send out, we will. Um, but to get to these really unique solutions, you know, uh, like you never make the same thing once type of type of stuff, you know. We like we all like to make stuff, and so we, it's nice to have all these tools. They sort of feed, you know, everything else. You know, we make this, you know. Now we have all these other tools that may be something else. So we don't have it all figured out, but that's kind of the MO. I think. And the reality is, a lot of our is if we didn't have these in-house capabilities. We wouldn't be able to meet some of the time frames that we deal with. So it's really nice to just, oh, I have an idea, you know, go into our shop and laser cut some prototypes quickly and try it out, see how it works, you know, or CNC something. Um, and so it really streamlines everything for us. Yeah, do you want to go see the shop? Oh, yay. If you, if you guys got time, uh, yeah, it'd be awesome. Yeah. I'm going to do the camera, okay? So, so where we're at right now is our office. Panoramic of our office really quick. This is our office. We look like a startup. We've been in here for uh, since summer, but we're starting to build it up by adding whiteboards. and These are our desks over here, and we have a little bit of a kitchen, but this is where we did all the design work. and. And did everything, and then our office or our shop is right next door. So, I'll take you down the hallway. It's not much to look at. It's dark and colorful. Yeah, we're in a uh, we're in an old warehouse building, uh, and so it's in various stages of repair, but it has a lot of character. Okay, we're entering. This is our. We have a garage garage door and a man door. So this is our shop. So here's, I'll just do a quick panoramic. We have a panel saw, we have our CNC router, we have a vacuum former, work tables, laser cutters, um, hand tools. This is our material. We have a stock of materials and everything. So. By the way, all these random crates throughout our space are all from the uh, Oreo project. Yeah, look at, wait, can we look in one? <laughs> oh, wait. Yeah, it's just, just... It's just like a bunch of crates just filled with random. There was a lot of things we had to ship down that wasn't even the machines. Yeah. So. I'm guessing you've probably eaten a lot of 
Oreos and taste tested it a lot over the past few months. I, too, huh? I think I gained like 10 pounds. <laughs> For real, I was like, I was trying to do this vegan thing beforehand, and then, I mean, they're vegan, but I just gained weight and of lose weight, which isn't supposed to happen when you're vegan. So we built out this space. Uh, we painted it and brought it back to where it is now. Um, it's, it's, we still have some plans to make it, you know, my plans were to have sort of like an apple shop where it's super clean, uh, you know, have like cool machines and like it really clean. Uh, it always gets dirty, but the nice thing, this is an upgrade for us, is that this is primarily like the dust and the dirt. Um, and then our office can maintain a little bit more cleanliness. Um, our past office, it was kind of all in the same room. And so, you know, dust in your computers and it's, it's nice to have that separation. We have more space to get a big project. We have the space to make, to make it happen. Um, so it's, it's been really nice. Um, and also, of course, you know, getting some of our tools you know, we invest heavily in, you know, like our CNC machine, razor cutters. You know, not a lot of places have this because it's a big overhead. Um, but we think it's crucial to allow us to, you know, like I said, do testing or even do the, do the manufacturing. You know, we have a limit as to quantity and, like, how much we can do. Uh, but we can do really, really good short run prototypes, you know, so, you know, we've done robotic work in the past. Pittsburgh is a big robotic town in terms of like personal robots. Um, so we've, uh, show them on the wall. This is a vacuum form shell of, um, essentially shell that goes over a robot that we did. It's four feet tall, so you can get a sense of scale. So you got to... You've got a pretty large vacuum former there, then. Jeez. Yeah. yeah we, we built it for a project a couple years ago. Yeah, Brandon actually built that by scratch himself with just like an online, um, I don't know, how to. Yeah. We built it for this project, which is we call the death mask. It's not a death mask. It's for cryogenics use, though. <laughs> Cryonics use. Basically... They put it on people's faces to cool down points of their head rapidly to help aid with the freezing of their body when it's their time. <laughs> these, are, uh, these are some uh, foam carved uh, bucks we use to create the robot skin. And we used our vacuum former. So this is an example of some of the 3D CNC work that we would do for projects. Um, glue together foam. And then, you know, create this buck that we then use our, our vacuum former. Um, I'll show you the vacuum former. It is, we have a tech shop here, but I don't even think they, I don't even know if they have a vacuum former. And if they do, it's not as good as ours, that's for sure. Oh, that's a monster. Ours is pretty awesome. Wow. Yeah, so this has an interchangeable platen. This is a two-by-two two area. And um, this is actually an MDF buck of, I don't know if you saw the lights dangling in the back of our office, but this is the shape that I use to vacuum form styrene over to make those each half of those lights. But this is a two foot by two foot platen, and then if your project calls for something larger, you would expand it to the four by uh, four by two platen. Yeah, I um, think I saw that mold on your on your tumbler. You guys made those lights. Yeah, yeah, so you don't, um, yeah, and essentially the reason for that is just so you don't waste plastic, waste yeah. material, and then it's, yeah, this was, um, there's the heating coils. This was built, uh, I started out with the, um, the proto mold plans, which is, uh, yeah, one of the only plans that you can find online to build, um, a quality vacuum former, and, uh, I started with those, and then, made my own alterations here and there, but um, I could talk about this machine for a long time. <laughs> I had a fun time building it, and it works really well. But, it's um, pretty awesome. Vac vacuum formers are, are uh, 
are awesome. And, and obviously, you guys have a prototypers uh, heaven there. Basically, that's the real Disneyland right there, I think. Um, <laughs> you guys got going there. But uh, I, I have also a vacuum former that is also in, inoperable right now. And it's done in, in my workshop. Um, so I haven't had so much success with that. But, but that's, a, that's an awesome machine you got there. You got a nice Thank job. You. Nice job building that. Thanks. So this is just kind of, we're not done building now our shop either. Um, this will be a wall someday, but this is the closet. These are the compressors that run the CNC machine. And in the back there, those are some bucks that we've 3D carved in the past for past projects. So we have a pretty big machine here. So this is a 5x10, 3-axis, has eight, 8 tool changers, automatic tool changer, uh, dust boot. Um, these are actually made here in Pittsburgh, these machines, and they're really good. Um, super powerful. Uh, it's got like a you know, 6 to 7 inch Z-axis, so in terms of carving foam, we have that kind of height. We would like to get higher. Uh, so we could, you know, do some different stuff. But, you know, over the past like three months, we've used the heck out of this, uh, and it's just great. Um, I'll show you. It's a that thing's back. huge too. So here's, so we have, it's an eight tool changer. There's dust boot. Oh. Jeez. And it goes all the way up and over and back down. You know, I've got, I've got to ask, I'm sure that the Oreo project was profitable, but um, I, I haven't done much research on, um, you know, uh, your guys' – did you guys do any crowdfunding or get funding from some VCs? Or that, that's, I mean, that's not, a, not cheap equipment you guys have there. Well, this – we have uh, some private investors, and so, you know, like I said, we're really small, and so, you know, a lot of the stuff, um, we, we pretty much bootstrapped everything except for this machine. Yeah, yeah, and so it, it's still early days, you know, in terms of businesses, and because we want to invest in this type of stuff, it takes a while to get up and running, uh, and it takes a while to institute that in, and also to explain to people what we're up to. Um, because most people see like, oh, you're a design firm, oh, you make stuff, and they don't necessarily put the two together. Yeah, exactly. So with someone like Oreo or other people, you know, it, it's not a, it's not complicated, uh, but it's complex. And so, you know, the world we live in, the products we live in, uh, they've never been done before. And so, it's, you know, most of the people like our this past job <clears throat> with Maya and Oreo, like they got it. They, they know the complexities. They know what it takes to get it done. Um, and so, you know, when you have that, those type of opportunities, these projects together pretty easily, uh, especially when you have, you know, one of the largest you know, food brands in the world uh, wanting to get something done. Um, so I think... Uh, you know, we have we have a lot of plans, you know, but it's also just getting those right right projects and right clients. You know, as you guys know, you know, so you're only as good as your last job. Yeah. You know, and you want to build up those right projects so they can move you to that next level. Um, so that's that's what we're trying to do is, you know, <laughs> these different client needs and then do cool stuff. Yeah, I, I definitely uh, I feel you on the complexity of explaining exactly what it is. Um, you know, I still have a, a little bit of trouble, and it's tough sometimes um, for me to explain, um, you know, 3D printing and open source 3D printing to people, um, you know, and, and just general, you know, why I'm sitting downstairs in my workshop till the sun comes up sometimes, you know, when it's snowing outside and I don't have a heater down there and, um, you know, my wife, my 
my daughter's waking up and I'm just coming upstairs, you know, it's it's uh, it's tough to just say, well, I make stuff. <laughs> you know, that, that doesn't really cut it for a lot of people's eyes, and especially when you're talking about exchanging um, um, uh, funding and cash, you know, and, and money. Um, so that I, I know I know what you guys are going through there, and uh, it gets even worse when you try to bring in 3D printing food in there. Oh man, um, the complexity levels keep rising. Yeah, one of the one of the things down in South by Southwest, they had the people who print the sugar cubes. You know what I'm talking about? Um, yeah, the 3D printers. systems. Yeah, yeah, they were the, down uh, there. And the, the, the one like candy, you know, sugar. That's the, the sugar lab is the, that the small group, I believe. To our, uh, I'm going to take us back into the, our office. We have a little bit better reception in there, too. So let me ask you this about your, uh, your warehouse that you're in. Um, are you guys the only ones who are, are taking up space in there, or is this kind of like a, I don't know about a... No, about it's, a it's full. Like, the rent was so good here, and it's like the best location in Pittsburgh. It's like everybody's trying to get a piece of this warehouse right now. Yeah, yeah. It's a really nice historical building, um, and uh, in, its, in the past couple of years, it's reached 100% capacity with... Uh, a huge variety of tenants from tech company startups. There, there's actually um, there's a CrossFit gym in here. The guys next to us build um, synthesi modular synthesizers from scratch. I'm gonna put you down. There's artist studios. Space at the hacker space in uh, Frankfurt, where it was an old um, manufacturing plant. And uh, now it's been uh, encompassed by small little startups and um, prototyping places, and, and of course the hacker space is there, which is has the smallest room of everything. But uh, but yeah, those old type of warehouses, and I can kind of visualize it, thinking about the Steel City now. Uh, it probably has some big pipes coming off one of the sides somewhere, and you guys probably aren't far from the from the uh, industrial area, and that and I can kind of visualize the skyline from where you're at there. Let me ask you, Jason, what's the scene in Frankfurt in terms of, you know, and also Lewis in Barcelona, um, the United mm -hmm. is, is the making, uh, you know, craze the same over there? Uh, well, I'll, I'll touch on, um, you know, in Germany in general, it's, uh, it's, it's pretty big. So we've got um, small maker fairs and uh, events and conferences popping up all the time. Um, the next one, the next larger one is coming up in May. Uh, it's called Fabcon 3D, and that's up in Erfurt. It's a couple hours from here, but um, I haven't told anybody yet, but I'll actually be attending that. They asked me to come and talk about the Bot BQ, so I'll be, I'll be going up there and doing a short presentation on the Bot BQ. Um, but but in Frankfurt specifically, there's a you've got the uh, Computer Chaos Club, which is you know that's all these old uh, these old uh, hacker spaces. They're kind of transforming not only about you know just specifically uh, you know programming and you know uh, actual hacking you know software and things like that into uh, you know making you know it's it's kind of the evolution of the hacker space you know ever. Um, and so the, it's uh, it's it's really everywhere, you know. When when you when an event comes up, it's it's packed. So for example, uh, Marcus Link, um, he used to run the hacker space in Frankfurt. He uh, had a, a, a small convention in um, in last September, the open source three D printing convention here in Frankfurt, and um, we did I I can't remember how many I think he 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 sold out the Fab Scan. Are you guys familiar with the Fab Scan? It's the, the 3D scanner you can build for $100. It's similar to the MakerBot one, but it's, it's open source and it's only $100. Um, so we did a, he did a bunch of those kits. Based, I think he had like 20-something. He had 3D uh, uh, printers being built there. We had, he had lots of presentations. So whenever there's an event, it's full. 
And if you guys, uh, I'm not sure if you guys are on Google Plus at all, but uh, but it's it's all day on there. And uh, I would say a majority of the people who I interact with on there are actually um, here in Germany um, as well. Maybe that's just because I'm here and you know I know several people. But uh, but but where I'm at, it's it's uh, it's growing every day. And uh, pretty soon here, my daughter will also be involved, uh, not by choice, but she will be. But I, I'm not sure about Barcelona. I hope to take a trip down there before too long. But uh, we hear you. I hear you. So for us, I think it's kind of different. I think uh, at least uh, from my point of view, uh, we don't have like this uh, big TNC community and stuff like this. But what uh, what is about 3D printing is getting really, really big. It's like Lots of people building printers and, and not just building them, like designing new things, new hotends, or all, all this sort of stuff. So it's it's, it's uh, there is a really interesting and alive community uh, that is getting big uh, really really fast, and that's pretty pretty great, I think. Cool. Well, I, I assume it's a global phenomenon, uh, but interesting to hear about your each different cities, um, like what you have available to you. Well, not too far. I mean, I'm 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 just outside of Frankfurt in a, a, a smaller city, kind of the Detroit of uh, Germany. We have GM here, and everybody's here. It's it's also a dying city, just so you know. Um, but uh, anyway, so within within about 20 minutes, there's uh, three major areas: Mainz, Wiesbaden, and Frankfurt, and then Darmstadt's about 25 minutes away. And each one of those cities has, uh, I would say at least one hacker space um, and then you know branching out from there you know I know several websites from each city that just sell 3d printer kits or parts or you know hold workshops as well um, and the cool thing well for me you know I've always been kind of a, a geek and nerd and, and doing this type of stuff with 3d printing um, and, and, you know it's not so geeky or nerdy you know anymore and you know I I've never thought I was I was that that nerdy, but you know I used to play football, and you know when when I, my friends would ask me, you know why are you sitting in front of the computer all night and then coming to football practice tired, you know I'd just be like that's what it does, and so that's what happens. But I think the the evolution of um, from being the old school geek, which is what I was, into uh, you know actually making things. It's kind of taking that transition, and I, and I like it. And it's it's uh, over here. It's it's not. There's no uh, there's no split. Uh, if you kind of get what I'm saying, so you know, it, there's no uh, discrimination against you know who's doing what. Um, and that, I, I don't know if that made any sense at all. But sorry. Well, I think it's becoming more accessible, and I think that's the proof of how this project became in fruition. Is there's a lot of stuff that's more accessible. Uh, you know, the Delta bots, for instance. It's a relatively cheap technology now. Um, yeah, it was, it was actually pretty amazing. We, we were like, oh, we need to get a Delta bot to start testing and, you know, ordered it online and in three days it was here and totally functional. Yeah, so that sort of accessibility is really allowing, you know, some of these bigger ideas to come to fruition. And, um, Maybe that's just the way the way it works. Is a certain amount of time has to pass, and uh, you know things start bubbling to the top, and uh, you know good stuff gets sorted out. And stuff doesn't work goes this way, and big brands like Oreo hire people like us, and we are able to put the stuff together and make something cool. So you know it's all like this arc. You know I'm not sure where we're at in the arc, but. Uh, we definitely feel, uh, you know, emboldened to push different boundaries because it's at our fingertips. I know it's been uh, quite a long time here with you guys. Thank you so much for taking up all your time. Uh, I do want to. I do got two questions though. Um, what What other type of stuff do you guys got coming out that we can look out for? Well, um, there may be something to stay tuned for. You know, possibly the future with Oreo. Uh, we can't say too much about that. Um, they can 
continuation perhaps. Um, we have some other projects we're working on uh, involved in some awareness campaigns that might involve some cool interactive, you know, public front facing uh, kiosks. Um, so some of those things, they're, um, they're more regional. Um, so we're hoping to parlay some of this new technology and stuff uh, and all the stuff that we've been wanting to look at, you know, into some bigger projects. Um, and so you know, the dust still hasn't quite settled um, with, you know, sort of uh, the, uh, this path project. I think we're also kind of getting our bearings a little bit. And, uh, you know, there's a couple of some other product design projects we have uh, that we're working on. Yeah, I, uh, we have a project with a, uh, a private in, in, uh, a private inventor, actually. So, um, he hopes to release, we hope to mainstream, the, or streamline the process to get him a awesome prototype getting him started to manufacture his idea um, and selling it in the next few months. So. Yeah, so a little bit of product design and if, uh, another project, you know, maybe some uh, new technology uh, mixed with some old school marketing. Um, so uh, we'll see what the next big shoe to drop is, um, but we're sort of waiting uh, a little bit to see how we can parlay some of this other stuff. Uh, into some more exciting projects. Yeah, we, we never know what's going to come through the door next. It's, it's always a surprise. Yeah, yeah, we're still at the stage, you know, in our company, we're still so new. Um, you know, um, we're waiting for all those people to knock on our doors, um, and more and more of them are. Um, but uh, it's still, um, you know, we have to be inventive. You know, we have to, you know, do stuff internally to gauge interest. Um, so, but uh, we're going to plan for success and keep on going. And, you know, I'm sure the next thing we do won't be anything like what we did, you know, last month. We'll just kind of hold on and see where it goes. That's, a, that's pretty exciting. That's pretty exciting uh, uh, that you guys get to do that. I mean, you just, you just wait for something to come in and then you – Go with the flow. Um, so, if somebody wanted to uh, make a prototype or uh, you know have an idea, you know, how would they reach out to you, or um, you know, what what would be the next step for them if they wanted to come to you and, and needed help uh, generating an idea they have into a, a, a physical product like this uh, open source um, open source minifig here guy. Well, they could uh, just go to our website, www.laserlabstudio.com, or they could email us at info at laserlabstudio.com. You can reach out to us and we'll respond that way. Okay, great. Good deal. Is there anything else you guys wanted to touch on? Or, Lewis, you've been on mute there for a little bit. Uh, I don't know. I'm still shocked by the by the workshop. I'm super jealous. <laughs> like, <laughs> like you have all the toys that I always <laughs> ask for Christmas. No, but I, I think it's really cool. I really like the idea of what you said before. Like each project is different. You you get to learn from them, but you don't get stuck in the same thing. So you like moving forward. And and also I think it's really important what you said before. Like it's not it's not like the technology or what you're doing is the user experience, no, but mixing all things together to make it properly, to work for people. No? I really like the idea and the concept, and I think it's what is really needed in some places like 3D printing, no? So I, 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 I really like what you do. And I, well, I, thanks a lot. You know, keep in contact, you know, uh, and, you know, uh, we love to keep the, the dialogue open. Uh, Hear more about what you guys are up to. We have your Twitter uh, connections, uh, but uh, we'll definitely keep in contact to uh, keep track of what you guys are doing because you've definitely helped, you know, us uh, inspiration-wise. Um, uh, it's, 
but uh, it's, it's, it's important to uh, you know, meet you guys, and it's been fun to understand what you guys are doing. Thank you again for my part. It was, it was really an honor meeting you guys, Brandon, Katie, Adam. And I think what you guys got going is, is awesome, and I only wish you all the success, all the success, because uh, so far I think you guys are doing awesome already.